To finally make real use of pointers, we need contiguous blocks of memory to point to. To get a contiguous block of memory, our process has to request it from the operating system, and that means making a system call. In the C standard library, the function which makes a system call is called malloc, standing for memory allocation. When we call malloc, we pass in an integer representing the number of bytes we want, and then the operating system will decide which block of memory of that size it wants to give you, and it will return back a pointer denoting the address of the first byte in that block. These blocks of heap memory will stick around in our process until we explicitly give them back, so a program should always remember to give back any memory it allocates once it's done with that memory. Otherwise, what tends to happen is that the process, as it continues running over a long period, it'll just keep growing and growing until eventually the whole program just falls over or the process is otherwise just terminated. So the memory is automatically given back if you just close the process, but it's still a bad idea to just keep around any memory you allocate. So to explicitly give back this memory, what we do is we call the standard library function free, which invokes the system call for deallocating memory. And we pass to free a pointer that points to the first byte of the block we want to deallocate. This works because the operating system effectively keeps a list of all the blocks of memory that it has previously allocated to your process. So you pass in the pointer, the address of the start, and it knows what block of memory you're talking about. So let's look at an example. Malloc actually returns a void pointer. The void pointer type is effectively a generic pointer type. When we declare a void pointer variable, we can actually assign any kind of pointer value to that variable without any casting. In fact, you can go the other way without casting too. You can assign a void pointer value to a pointer variable of any type. The one thing you can't do with a void pointer, however, is dereference it, because there's no such thing as a void type value. So in any case, we have our void pointer variable named p here, and then we call malloc with the argument 5. So malloc returns a void pointer representing the address of a contiguous block of 5 bytes somewhere on the heap of your process. Similarly, we can declare a float pointer called f, and then call malloc with the argument of 13, assigning the pointer it returns to f. So the float pointer f now holds the address of the first byte of a contiguous block of 13 bytes. And these 13 bytes are somewhere on the heap of your process. So then we do whatever we want with these two blocks of memory, and then when we're done with them, we should give them back. So we call free with pointers pointing to the first bytes of these blocks in memory. When we allocate memory, we often make use of what's called the size of operator. The size of operator, written with the reserved word size of, and then followed by a type, returns the size in bytes of that type. So here the expression size of int returns the size of an int for whatever platform you're compiling for. So if you compile for a 32-bit platform, it should return 4. And if you compile for a 64-bit platform, it should return 8. The expression size of double should return 8 on almost all platforms. And then the expression size of float pointer, and yes, the parentheses here are necessary because size of actually has a higher precedence normally than the asterisk. This expression returns however many bytes it takes to represent an address on your platform. So say if you compile for a 64-bit processor, it should return 8. So size of is useful in allocations because we can do something like this. We can allocate 7 times the size of int. So no matter what platform you compile for, this allocation will return a block of memory the size of 7 ints. So now I can confidently use this block of memory such that I can assign an int value to the dereference of p plus 6 which should effectively be the last int in this block of seven ints. And then again, whatever else I do with this block of memory, when I'm done with it, I need to deallocate it. Sometimes memory allocations fail because for some reason the operating system just can't find a contiguous block of memory of the size you requested for whatever reason. Maybe your process is hogging too much memory or maybe other processes are hogging too much memory. In any case, the system can't give you the block of memory that you requested, so it returns a null pointer. It's your responsibility as the user of malloc to check for this condition every single time you call malloc. So here, immediately after calling malloc, we check p to see if it's null. If it is, the allocation has failed, otherwise we can just do our business and eventually we should give the block of memory back. Now, most commonly when you're developing a program, you get this error because you, you yourself have screwed up. Your program for some reason is taking too much memory or not giving memory that it allocates back. 
still, even if your code is totally bug free, you do have to account for the possibility because it may simply arise out of some eventuality that's just out of your control. The problem though is that aside from checking for such errors, what does your program then actually do in their eventuality? It's quite common that an allocation failure means that your program simply just can't continue at all. And so we need some strategy for gracefully backing out of a program in a way that preserves data and doesn't frustrate users.